Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kathy Hester. Welcome to my kitchen. It's daylight and I'm here. I thought I'd make us a little lunch today. So just be aware from the get-go, we are not making fancy, authentic food today. What we're doing is we're saying, I have some tortillas, I have some refried beans, what are some of my choices? Okay, so we're not, we're not making anything that's super um, amazing, off the charts. Um, it's not quite as interesting as pupusas, but you know what? I don't know about you, but I end up in this situation a lot. So I was thinking of making crunch wraps today, and then because I am gluten-free, hi Jackie, good morning. Let me take this down a little bit, the sound. Oh, some people are coming in. So I will kind of reiterate what I was talking about. So today, thanks for joining me for lunch. Um, we're not making some sort of wonderful, authentic dish. What we're doing is we're taking things that we have laying around the house and making lunch with it. And I think that's a situation we end up in a lot. That's why I like to make big batches of refried beans, or not fried beans. And if you weren't, um, if you haven't already seen the recipe that I did for this for Vlogmas, and oh yeah, it's Vlogmas Day 15. We're almost halfway through Vlogmas, so 15 days I have gone live. Um, oh, and hello Facebook user. If you're on a Facebook group, I may not see your name, so if you want to type your name and then put your comment, then I can greet you appropriately. And Dorian is here also, so welcome. So what we're doing today, okay, now a lot of people are here. You guys are just taking a little while to get in, but I am glad you're here. So just to reiterate, we're making lunch. We're not doing anything fancy. I've got a bunch of refried beans that I made last week. And if you, depending on where you are, if you look somewhere around, I have a link to the YouTube video so you too can have leftover refried beans. And I was thinking of maybe talking about some of the different ways we could use them. And I was really wanting a crunch wrap. And here's, here's the sticker though, is that I'm gluten-free. So gluten-free flour-ish tortillas break. And I'm going to kind of show, I, I realized I should have gotten some uh, wheat tortillas because I was just at the store just to show you. But I can kind of give you a little idea of what this would look like. And Joanne says she has the same problem. Is that leftover refried beans? Could that be true? So the tortillas that I'm using today, I wanted to try out. And if you're not gluten-free, there's no need to spend a bazillion dollars on gluten-free tortillas. Okay, these are vegan, these are made with teff, and they still have tapioca starch and things in them. And they're moister than a lot of tortillas. These guys here, I literally cut some fresh tortilla, well, these aren't really fresh, some freshly bought <laughs> tortillas from the Harris Teeter, cut them in half and air fried them for probably about six or seven minutes so that they would be crunchy. You could also just use chips. I'm probably gonna try and melt a little bit of this Miyoko's Creamery. Um, I haven't tried this yet. I'm very curious because it's made with oat milk and I, and I love Miyoko's products. Now, if you are um, SOS, if you don't do sugar, oil, or salt, you don't have to use this, or you could have on the side, if you go to plantbasedinstantpot.com, I have this amazing recipe for cauliflower queso, and you can switch up the spices if you don't have everything on hand, and it looks kind of like Velveeta, like that queso you make with Velveeta and salsa. And you could use that instead, and that is completely oil-free. Um, hi, Sherry from Michigan, welcome. It's good to have you here. So let's look at this for a second. So if I were to make a crunch wrap, I would have some crunchy things. I would put some beans in here and have some crunchy things, maybe put some other things. So you'd fold it here. This is gonna tear. So I'm just letting you know, but so you would just kind of fold it almost like you're doing a dumpling. And this one is gonna crack all the way around. And honestly, it's a little bit small, but you can kind of get the idea. With a regular flour tortilla, as you do these folds, it's just gonna fold in there. 
and we're gonna do it the cheater way. And then you would just put it over and you would cook it with all those flaps down. So that would be the difference. If you have just a regular flour tortilla that's nice and moist and delicious, flour tortillas were one of my favorite, favorite gluten things. Um, you could do this instead of kind of the weird thing that I'm getting ready to do. And I'll just, I will make chips or something out of that. So when I have some refried beans and we've been eating them for a few days, one of my tricks is to add some salsa. And I am going to, this is the pepita salsa from Trader Joe's and I'm really digging it. Um, I'm actually thinking of trying to make a copycat. So that's just gonna add a little extra flavor. I'm gonna put a couple of tablespoons. That's probably a cup and a half of beans. So this could also be done with can of refried beans, except I would encourage you with the can of refried beans to add in some onion and garlic powder too, because they're not gonna be as flavorful as mine. I'll go ahead and say it out loud. I guess I'm feeling myself a little bit today. You could also put some jalapeno powder in there, which is delicious. You could put some smoked paprika. And this same thing, some of the things that we're gonna do, if you want to just make like a five or seven layer dip, this would work as well. So usually I kind of spice up my beans a little bit. <laughs> I know, Joanne says, freshly bought. I know, well, sometimes I actually, we're lucky enough to have um, a few places that make fresh tortillas in, in really close to us. And usually I go and I stand in line and I just kind of go how many I want because of my Spanish. You guys know I can't even pronounce American things. It's just, I'm just not very good at it. And, and then I get my fresh tortillas and I make the yummy things. But this is about, again, about making lunch and about enhancing leftovers that we have and thinking of some other ways to repurpose them so our families don't feel like, okay, well, because like, I can't remember the first night what I did with the refried beans, but the second night I made tacos and then I had some refried beans and some rice. I think I did, oh, I made bowls actually with, with the first refried beans. So I had some rice and some refried beans, and we had some other yummies on top of there. So the point of making a bunch of refried beans is A, you can take them and freeze extras, so you can pull out just what you need. B, sometimes like, I knew I was going live every day this week, and at some point I was just gonna be a little bit extra tired. And in fact, behind us, you can see the slow cooker, I soaked some of those red beans that we unboxed in the Rancho Gordo earlier this week. I think it was Sunday. And I soaked those, so I actually have them with some Cajun spices and things like that. So today's gonna be a super easy cooking day for me, and that's okay too. Hi, Bonnie from Atlanta, Georgia, and Susan from Indiana. Okay, awesome. So again, all I did was infuse these leftover refried beans, or they could be a can of refried beans that you just got. So w this is meal three with the refried beans. Cheryl is gonna revolt if I don't kind of make it a little bit sexier. So I added in some of this. This pepita salsa is really good. If you didn't have any salsa, again, you could put some smoked paprika, liquid smoke, onion powder, garlic powder, maybe some ancho chili powder, which we already have in our beans. And that just kind of gives it a little bit of a different flair. Okay, I'm gonna take a couple of pieces of these cheese. Let's see, does it, I need the fancy scissors. Let me go get my fancy um, kitchen shears. And once again, everybody knows why they're kitchen shears because they're hidden from your spouse or people who live with you so they don't open up packages with them because if you wouldn't lick it, you shouldn't cut it up. So this is just, I've never tried this Miyoko's cheese. So I thought that would be kind of fun to try too. I'm gonna to cut up a couple of pieces. Sometimes I would shred it, but this is lunch. I think it's, and again, this does have oil, so if you're oil free, just skip this part. A, we need to taste a little corner of this and see what it's like. 
right? Quality control. Oh, that's nice. With a little spicy. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm only going to put this on mine. I think it's too spicy for Cheryl. So we can give her some shredded cheese on top or something. So I'm just going to kind of fold this up a little bit and sort of just chop it, shred it ish, you know, then chop. I could um, go ahead and use like a box grater, but that's just not what I feel like doing today. My hands are finally healing from um, me getting into a fight with a serrated knife, so I think I just don't want my knuckles that close. And you could keep cutting it up small. One thing I will say, even with Daya cheese and some of the shredded vegan cheeses, if you're using them, I find if you chop them smaller, they melt better. Um, cheeses like Daya and all the cheeses sometimes too do a little bit better in a wet environment when they're melting. So what does that mean? That means when either I'm making my um, chili cheese dip, which is either um, some frozen homemade vegan chili or a can of Amy's vegan chili, like that's one of our like emergency meals. And then I put some um, whatever kind of vegan cheese that we have in there. And you can, um, if you're oil free, you don't have to use the cheese, you can put queso and um, you can, it's hard to find oil-free chips that don't have any salt. All you have to do is cut these into like six, eight pieces, depending on how you like your chips, and put it in the air fryer or in your oven and watch them carefully, and you've got chips you can have. It's kind of awesome. All right. Um, Joanne says, have I tried making lentil tortilla? They're super easy, keep well, and stay flexible. I have not. Now, is it like a dosa? Like, is it with uridal or is it with a different kind of lentil, Joanne? I'm interested to try it. I do have some recipes for some better tortillas to try to make. Um, and hello, Tara from Ireland, another place I want to visit very badly. Um, and M, M. Fergie, it's good to see you. And Joanne said, yeah, this is um, Miyoko's new oat milk cheese. So, you know, I got to try some oat milk. And um, someone says, uh, so, uh, someone in a Facebook group says, I love corn tortillas in the air fryer. Yeah, it's just easy. So I've got a little cheese. And what, what I'm going to do may seem a little bit like blasphemy. So if you're a traditionalist, you may not want to watch. So since I can't roll it into that like cool crunch wrap, and again, for those of you who've just come in, this is the bastardized crunch wrap because gluten-free tortillas don't fold in like this. They just crumble. But you just take your tortilla and you just kind of fold it in. And you just move it, fold, move it, fold. And it's going to burst up like an accordion. So you hold it, turn it over, and that's when you put it in your air fryer. So for mine today, I'm doing kind of I don't know what you would call them. Weird quesadillas, we're just gonna fold ours over. And the reason is, it's not even that I'm trying to be lazy, it's just that everything's gonna break. And we're making lunch, we're not making um, culinary history today. Oh, it's Helene, okay, awesome Helene. So all I did with these refried beans, and I'm gonna get some refried beans all over this. And you can see the pieces of the yummy goodness that was in the Trader Joe's pepita salsa. So now we have a little bit of peppers and some yummy stuff like this. You could spread this thinner if you wanted to, but I just kind of want to get, <laughs> I just want to eat and then eat again from our, our red beans that are cooking in the slow cooker. I don't want to have to feel like I need a snack or anything. We could put other things in here too. This is gonna be mine, so I'm gonna sprinkle, actually I'll give Cheryl a little cheese. It's just, it's spicy, okay? 
And then we're gonna make some guacamole while these are cooking. And we'll talk a little bit about that and some seven layer dip too. So I'm just gonna kind of put this here. And the reason I'm even putting this in is the whole part of a crunch wrap is that you get to have some sort of crunchy yummy goodness. You want to hear the crunch. And so I'm just gonna fold that on like that. And what's gonna happen in the air fryer is this outside tortilla is gonna get crispy too. And that's gonna be some of the money of this. Okay, I'll leave that open. Okay, we'll make Cheryl's. Okay. Cheryl likes less beans, so she's kind of getting it. I also wanna make sure that she has a good nutritious lunch. These tortillas, again, if you've just come in, I know Helene is here, and Helene, I don't know if you've tried these. These are the Teff gluten-free tortillas from the Tortilla Factory. Hey, B-Love! You guys, you just make me so happy just that you exist in the world. They're some of the nicest women I know. So what we're doing is we're, we're making lunch and not making culinary history again. So this is some of those refried beans that we made last week. And I am making them so it doesn't seem, Cheryl will not notice that she's eating refried beans in three different meals. She thinks she had a bowl, <laughs> tacos, and now a crunch wrap, right? And you could do things like you could put, um, you could put soy curls in here, you could put tofu, you could put, uh, if you had leftover vegetables, you could put leftover vegetables in there. I mean, this is the, the game of no rules. And this is just a little bit of this Miyoko's oat milk cheese that I, I bought to try. It's a little extra spicy, which is why I'm being chintzy with Cheryl's, because she is not a spice lover. Excuse me. Um, all right. But I'm not wasting a bit of that cheese. <laughs> So we're just gonna put some of these, and these are tortillas that, like I said, I freshly bought at the store. <laughs> I did not make these because this is lunch. This is not time to, um, you know, make all the things. I'm gonna put that in there. So this is um, a modified for gluten-free <laughs> crunch wrap. Let me get that guy in there, okay? So again, Normally, we'd have a little bit bigger tortilla and we would fold it apart about to the middle, hold that, kind of ruffle it up. Okay, so we're gonna stick this in here. And it should be stuck down enough that things aren't gonna come up, but we'll find out. So I thought while we did that, um, Okay, and Helene says she hasn't tried, I hadn't seen these um, Teff tortillas and they definitely feel pretty soft. A lot of times with gluten-free, it's, oh, I've got some flour in here that's, that's that kind of flour. C cassava, cassava flour is supposed to make a really good tortilla but I haven't made it myself yet, the tortillas. I'm not awesome at making tortillas, actually, just in case you wondered. And we'll keep this so we can taste our guacamole as we go along. I have a couple of avocados. This one may or may not be, oh, that doesn't look lovely. We'll set this one aside. And I'll get another good one out. I've been trying to clean out the fridge and keep it at least, you know, <laughs> manageable. I always say, I, have, I live kind of like the big life in the kitchen and we have like Barbie's refrigerator, like from her dream house, in that it's that small. So it's counter depth, so things will sometimes just come off flying when we open it up. So you don't need this tool, but if you have it, like I do, it's kind of nice. So it's got your little cut the avocado, get the pit out of the avocado, and slice the avocado. 
part all at once. Ooh, and Helene said she ordered Cal Wonder wraps. I would love some really good wraps because I would love a, cr a crunch wrap, honestly. So this one doesn't seem super right, but I think it'll be okay. Oh, actually, it doesn't look so good. That doesn't look good at all. It's okay. Let's hope this guy's going to win. And then if it does, I'll grab another one. I have um, avocados from a couple of different places. Yes, yeah, see, that looks good. So then what you can do with this tool is you just turn it around. And this lets you really scrape all the avocado out. And that's what I like about it. Or you can cut your avocado with a regular knife like, like normal people do. And so I'm, then I'm just going to take this guy here. There we go. Plop him out. And you can do that with a knife as well. Just be very careful. If you're not good with a knife, don't hold it in your hand and then do this to get the pit. <laughs> Put it on the table and do it while you're practicing up. Okay, let's try another avocado in the fridge. I feel like we're gambling now. Does anybody want to take a bet? Okay. All right, I'm checking the top part. So in case you didn't know, when things, you can put avocados in the, in the fridge and that slows things down, but you can take this little stem part out and this is a little bit green. I think it's going to be okay. It feels a little bit underripe, but then again, so did that weird one that I didn't like at all. And there's a lot of different ways that you can make guacamole. Yeah, yeah this one's definitely a little under for me. But we're going to make it work. See, it still can, the, di the difference between it being a little bit under, it's just, it's a little harder. Okay, so again, and so what I was talking about is you could take the knife and do that. If you don't have a fancy dancy avocado scraper machine. And avocados can be expensive. And if, we're probably not going to have all of this guacamole um, today. And what I'll do is I'll squeeze some extra lime juice over the top, and that will keep it from oxidizing. So if you're not sure what oxidizing is, you know when it turns brown and it seems a little bit icky? It's just because the oxygen has gotten to it. So when we add a little bit of um, lime juice, it just fixes that right up. Okay, so that's telling me. Okay, that's looking good. And also, we could have done something similar with that. We could have rolled a burrito and put it in the air fryer and made it into a chimichanga or a fried burrito. Actually, this is, it's softer than it seems. It's very interesting. These avocados are a little misleading. I got some avocados because they were on sale at Sprouts, and then I got some in my Misfit Market. So I had too many avocados, which I never thought I would say. So my favorite cheater thing to do to make a really interesting good guacamole is to put salsa verde in there. And I do that if I do a seven layer or five layer dip as well. Because usually if you're making a dip, it's for a dip dinner or a party. Because you, And if it's a dip dinner, that means you're not really feeling like cooking. So I'd rather you not have to, right? So, um, Oh, and Sherry said she made her first pea guacamole, and you can totally make it with peas or, or other things as well if you, if you don't eat avocados or can't have avocados for your eating plan, for sure. Um, and Cheryl said, I hope it's good, so more to share. So I don't know what that is, but somebody may not be having dinner, lunch, 
I'm just kidding. Of course she's going to have lunch. Um, yeah, avocados are always a gamble, and it's okay. You are not a bad person if, you're auto, if you didn't get to your avocado in time. It has like a 10-second window. No, really, it has like a day window, usually. Not good, not good, not good, too done. So like the one I thought was underripe seems to be pretty good. And sometimes you can tell by how hard it is, but there are also different avocado varieties as well that can change that. Um, and Joanne says, check your avocado, though. They have surprised me lately. Some that I thought were goners were great shape, but some I thought were fine were nasty. Well, here's the thing, too. So I put that stuff over for the compost, but even the one that was not nice, I can make a face mask with that. So I can actually just smush it up like this and put it on my face and let it moisturize my skin with its avocado goodness. So if it's overripe, it just means it doesn't taste as good, but it's not bad. So you can totally do that or make a hand mask with it. I've done that before too. Um, I have not made pea guacamole because my one weakness thing that I just don't like very much is peas. I eat them, but the idea of eating a, a whole thing of peas, like I love split pea soup, all kinds of things that I really like. There is a, a I was about to say a giant gerbil, but it's actually a squirrel. There's this, there are two squirrels, and they're playing on the railing on the deck, going over and in and out by light, by ceramic lights that they're about to knock off. So if you, and they're, they're going back, they're like, we didn't do it yet. Can we do it again? Well, they're very talented because they did manage not to crash those. So I do appreciate it. Um, Oh, and Sherry says the pea guacamole is husband approved, and that always helps. Hi, Marilyn. It's good to see you. Um, I know Marilyn is gluten-free as well. And so I am making some faux crisp wrap, crunch wraps with these teff tortillas that I found. They're refried beans that I made. Oh, let's check these guys. And I'll let you kind of see where we're going over here. So the edges are starting to get nice and crisp. This is also heating up the beans on the inside. So while these are not traditional crunch wrap shapes, and see, can, the edges, they're getting um, stronger there. So I'm going to let this, let's see, I'm going to be a grown up and not have a pupusa disaster again. I am going to get a spatula. <laughs> Though that pupusa that was a little sad, it was still delicious. Okay. And usually, and this would be in the, the air fryer is nice because it has the holes. But still, all of this moisture settles by gravity towards the bottom. And what I can do, too, is... I could cut it in half, I could cut it in biteable pieces, or we can use a fork and knife to um, cut it up. Yeah, and the reason we're not doing the fancy crunch wrap thing is just because I'm using a gluten-free tortilla. Um, crunch quesadilla, I like that, Jackie, I'll take that. Maybe we are making food history. No, we're not. Um, face mask, how do you breathe through that? Ah. Uh, Joanne, have you been watching my friend Howard Jacobson? Because he's king of the dad jokes, and I feel like you're, you're vying with him right now. Um, I know the giant spatula. I will not fail. Um, so with this guacamole, or pea guacamole, this could be pea smashed up. We could have all kinds of things. Um, we could just leave it plain. We could put a little lime juice some salt if you use it, maybe some garlic powder, or onion powder, or crushed or um, crushed garlic. That could all be good. So when I'm kind of feeling super lazy, like I am now, and maybe I want it to seem a little different, I use any kind of salsa verde. This is a roasted one, because then we're putting tomatillos, jalapenos, um, some roasted tomato, a little bit of garlic. Um, cilantro and some vinegar in there and it's really good and this is how I make my multi-layered dip so I'm just gonna put some of that in also it's a good trick 
if you only have one avocado and you have a bunch of people coming because it kind of stretches it a little bit. A bazillion years ago, I worked at a Mexican restaurant called Three Amigos and they had green guac and this is what it was. And so that was probably when I was 18 or 19 years old. So I've been having this for a long time. And so you can taste it and depending on your salsa verity, if you've made it at home, if it's from a jar like mine is today, sometimes I have it homemade. You can taste it and then see if you wanna add anything else in there. Oops. Okay. I think I still wanna get some more lime juice in there. It's not a very heavy vinegary flavor in there. So I'm probably gonna put just about like a good lime slice maybe between two to three teaspoons, depending on how it cooperates. And I think I'm going to also go ahead and add in a little bit of garlic powder. And this is just, the reason this one is big is it's granulated garlic instead of garlic powder. Um, we could go ahead and maybe put just, just because I like a little bit of smokiness, let's put a little bit of smoked paprika in there. And this is just how I'm doing it today. I try to do it a little bit different. And I'm gonna put just a tad, a spare sprinkling, because Cheryl's gonna eat this, of jalapeno powder. Because I find that that honestly really amps everything up. If you like really, really hot foods, you could chop up jalapenos. You could chop up pickled jalapenos and put it in here. Because remember, we're making lunch and not necessarily authentic cuisine today. And the reason I keep saying that is I think that sometimes when you're cooking, you get that pressure, internal or not. I'm gonna, actually, I'm coming over here to check these guys. Because I think they are probably about done. I'm going to turn that off and we'll look at it in just a second. I just want to finish mixing this up a little bit. Taste it again. Yeah. With a little bit of lime juice, just the barest whisper of smoke and just a little tiny jalapeno powder has a really unique flavor to it. It still tastes kind of greenish, so it's more at a higher note than a lower note like ancho chili powder or guajillo chili powder. And sometimes I will even put ancho powder in here too. So, but if you do like a nice little dip, like so you can have the refried beans with your favorite salsa mixed up in there. You could put um, a layer of this guacamole, this green guacamole. You could put chopped tomatoes and lettuce, and if you wanted to put vegan cheese on there, you could do like a tofu sour cream or a cashew cream. And sometimes even, you can make it like, um, you could add either some pureed ancho chilies or guajillo chilies to that cashew cream, just to kind of keep giving each layer like a unique and different punch that still will be okay when you get all the layers. So that's another thing to kind of think about. Okay, yeah, that's the really good smoked paprika. And you know what, Joanne? I thought you kind of fibbed to me when you said it was smoked paprika. <laughs> and I apologize because on the front, it doesn't say smoked paprika. On the side, it says smoked paprika. So now I have enough smoked paprika to last me a good little while, which let me tell you, I'm not sorry about that. Okay, so here are our plates. <laughs> Don't you feel like you should be sitting across the counter having a plate with me? Because that's how I feel. And then you would see me losing my um, pot holder looking for it furiously. I got some refried beans on that pot holder and now all over me. Okay, 
So I'm just going to take this guy. It's all nice and crispy. So this one. And we could put more salsa on top. We could put shredded vegetables on there. We are going to, for right now, probably garnishing it with um, a little bit of guacamole. I don't have any cilantro or I would be putting cilantro all over this because I like cilantro almost like a salad. Okay, you could do that. Put a little, little dollop of extra sauce on there. And there you have it. Cheryl probably want a little bit of tofu sour cream on hers. But I mean, almost no effort. Like literally almost no effort. You guys, how many minutes? It's been 36 minutes and I have talked about everything and started a couple of times. So explain it to anyone and you're not justifying why you're folding it like a quesadilla instead of folding it up like a crunch wrap, you could probably make this in 10 minutes. So if you have a tortilla, if you have some of the refried beans, if you already have tortilla chips, you could just put those in, or you can make your own oil-free by cutting up corn tortillas and putting them in the air fryer or your oven. So there's no excuses. And if you can't have avocado, um, do what we just talked about and use peas. So it, it'll give it that same color. And honestly, it probably will be fine, and I do need to make it. We'll see, maybe I'll make some for Vlogmas. But if I added some of the same um, seasonings, you're not really going to taste the pea flavor so much. You're really going to taste more of the salsa, uh, salsa verde. You're going to taste a little more of the jalapeno powder, or the smokiness of the smoked paprika. Um, yeah, and some, and actually Marilyn says she does like half and half peas and avocado. You can do that too to reduce the fat, and I'm all for that. I have, obviously, my avocados are nearing the end of their days, so I got to, it's going to be an avocado couple of days for me. And Sherry said that I saw that you could add in an avocado, but since I didn't have any, I just went with all peas. That's awesome. And that's the thing. That's one of the things I'm always trying to tell you guys. Use what you have and change the recipe to what you like. So that's another thing. If it fits in your diet and you like it better a different way, if you hate smoky foods, I don't want you to use smoked paprika and liquid smoke when I tell you to. I want you to decide for yourself, I don't like smoke flavors in my food. I love it. I'm from the South and that's how we eat. You know, I grew up with smoke in everything. Uh, Heather says it looks delicious. And um, Jackie says, I, I still love the true guac we get here in Texas. And oh my God, the last time I was in Texas, I could eat flour tortillas and it, they were beautiful. Like if, I, if I'm in Texas and I could have nothing but flour tortillas and refried beans and some salsas, I'd be good. Because they were, yeah, brilliant, just brilliant. Uh, Jackie says cashew cream drizzled on top would be good. Absolutely. Joanne says lunch. Ta-da. She didn't say ta-da, but I added that in. Um, and now Jackie said she's going to make a bean quesadilla. And the only reason I'm not calling this a quesadilla is because I'm putting crunchy stuff on the inside. Because um, I was kind of hoping these tortillas would go ahead and do the crunch wrap thing. But that's asking a lot from gluten-free food. Um, so what I love is to see what you guys make for lunch. So if you're a member of the free private Facebook group, Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester, go put your lunch in there today. I want to see. Um, I, I live a life where it's not a lot of excitement. I went to the Harris Teeter today. That's probably my big, well, we are going to go see the lights tomorrow. So we're actually going to drive about 40 minutes to go drive through some Christmas holiday lights because lights and, you know, that's the life I live. So I need to see your food. It's important to me. Um, Oh, and that's a good question. If you use peas, can you use frozen? I would think you can use frozen peas for sure because fresh peas have such a short, um, a short 
time that they're available. So yeah, I'm sure you could use frozen peas. Now what I don't know is if you just let them thaw or if you need to steam them. So um, Jackie, Joanne, or Sherry, right? Yeah. How, Sherry, did you use frozen ones and did you cook them or did you just let them um, defrost? I'm curious about that. And Jackie says she's thinking of a Mexican style chili mac for dinner. I know. I'm, I've been thinking about January classes and I think I'm thinking of doing a pasta class, but I'm not sure because I was thinking I could do like chili mac, we could do a lasagna, some other things, and then I'm also thinking of maybe doing a casserole class. And those could fit in either one of those. So if, if you know, don't forget too, we've got the appetizer class that's Saturday. Um, today, wherever you see all the things, including the link to the refried bean recipe, I went ahead and put up the uh, discount codes for getting the December bundle. So you'd still get the class that happened last week, Air Fryer Fun, and you would get to um, attend live or watch later, up to you. The class is happening at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this Saturday, which is gonna be holiday appetizers for your own private mini meals of goodness. And I still haven't seen an answer about that. So I will look into um, the pea guacamole, Helene. Oh, wait. Sherry just defrosted them first, but steaming for a minute or two works as well. Okay, so I was thinking you probably could do it either way. I think for me, it would be important not to overcook it because I, except when it's English mushy peas, I like those. But when they're peas that aren't supposed to be mushy that get kind of weird, I don't, that's a, a weird thing with me personally. Um, and Joanne says, who is ex has excitement nowadays? This is our life as we know it and we'll make the best of it. Absolutely. Yeah, no, there's, there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, Cheryl wouldn't be having this for lunch. If we were in the old normal, she'd be eating something from work. Um, and Jackie said she used thawed once another time. She had to slightly steam because they were hard. So I think that's a great point. So some, some frozen peas are already starting to get a little mushy and those probably don't need to be cooked. The ones that still feel like they wouldn't mash easily probably need to be steamed for just a, a minute or two. Oh, sorry, Karen. Um, it was Karen on the peas, so I apologize. Um, but so there's some answers for you. Um, did I say 10 a.m.? I meant 11 a.m. 11 a.m. this Saturday is when the class is, 11. But I didn't sleep super well last night. <laughs> That's why I thought, let's do this while I'm fresh. I'll have lunch and I will have done Vlogmas, and I would have gotten to visit with you. So all the things, all the things, right? Okay, guys, um, again, go to Vegan on, on Facebook. Look for the group Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester. Put your um, pictures of your lunch. You can also do it on the Facebook group pages, Plant-Based Instant Pot or Healthy Slow Cooking. And you can also get this recipe for the refried beans on plantbasedinstantpot.com and I have a, a layered dip that I talk about all the things that I do with it on healthy slow cooking. So that's another place you could look. Okay guys, I will see you sometime tomorrow. Have a wonderful day and be kind to yourself.